It's your friendly neighborhood brother, J. Dot Butter, and I'm back at you again with another YouTube video. So, this is the full length video for my tips and tricks on how to pass the CompTIA A plus exam. Now, one of the first tips that I have to offer everybody is you need to get some sort of physical reading material. My suggestion is anything A plus comp to you, go get it. Uh, this book right here, if I remember correctly, cost me about $35. I actually went to Barnes and Noble. I know that they have it on Amazon. I know that they might have some on eBay. Make sure that you get the 10 oh, um, the 1001 and 1002, the 2020 1001. Hold on, let me show you guys. The 2020-1001-2020-1002, that is the most recent update of the A-plus certification. If it's 902, that's not appropriate. If it's 802, just forget about it. Now, first thing that I would tell anybody to do when you get this book is that you want to devote a certain amount of time to studying the book. I'm a big fan of using multiple different sources of 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 of, of um, study material, whether that's online or physical. But sometimes wording is important. And if you go from book to computer, computer to book, some of the terminology that they use on computers might be a little different than the terminology used in books. So stick with the book to begin with. OK. Second piece of advice I have for anybody is to get some sort of lab environment. Get, pardon the interruption, but I just want to show you guys what a virtual lab on the CP Nuggets website looks like. I'll go ahead and click that real quick. This one is covering the 1001 uh, mobile device. No, excuse me. This one is covering uh, configuration of, of Ethernet. Introducing IP addresses. Sorry about that. Introducing IP addresses. This is a virtual lab covering that. And as you see, uh, you just click the link. It takes about a minute to two minutes. So as soon as this populates, be right back. All right. So we back. We back. As you can see, it is finally populated. You can see the operating system version, the domain name, username, all that good stuff. This is CBT Nuggets Virtualization Lab. So uh, this costs, I want to say, $49 a month. Um, I'm going to keep looking for any sort of cheaper alternatives for you guys out there. So just stay, stay tuned to my channel. All right, back to the video. Get your hands on something that allows you to go in, manipulate either a virtualized computer or allows you to set up a virtual lab. That way you can have some hands on experience formatting disk, uh, doing in place upgrades, doing um, clean installations of Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 and obviously Windows 10. You also want to get familiar with some printers Uh I believe it's inkjet, thermal, laser, 3D, and impact, I believe, are the, the five. I may be missing one. Those, I believe, are the five printers that you need to uh, really, really focus and hone in on. So if you have a, a printer at home that you guys can use, I would definitely suggest that you start to tinker around with it. I'm not telling you to break your printer, obviously. But tinker around with it. See if you can plug it in using the Ethernet uh, cable to your computer. See if you can put it on the network. See if you can enable Bluetooth and set it up so that your computer can find it. Uh, just learn the different ways that you can connect to, a, to a, your printer. Learn different ways that you can troubleshoot streaks. Learning to troubleshoot um, ghosting images. Learn to troubleshoot... Uh, things like garbled printouts, anything like that. Just really focus in and hone in on 
your inkjet and your laser because those were the two uh, printers that I remember specifically being on the test. Number three, along with reading the book and getting your hands on some sort of lab content, I would suggest that you create a study schedule. For me, I took this book, which I believe is about 600 and 620, 630 pages long. So instead of trying to read 630 pages in a week, I broke it down into 50 page segments. So I would say Monday, I'm going to read 50 pages and I would break down my Monday into hours. So from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., I'm only going to read pages 1 to 10. From 9 p.m., from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm going to read uh, 11 to 20 and so on and so forth until I've read all 50 of the pages that I needed to read for that day. What you're going to find is that you're going to be able to retain a lot more information when you're breaking it down into small, compact study sessions, as opposed to sitting down trying to remember, OK, so what's the difference between eight and eight point one? OK, control alt delete allows me to change my password. OK, wait a minute. I need to you know, you don't want to be trying to remember everything all at once. You want to take some time to learn things as as you want to take take the time to learn things as you can. Now, my fourth and final step to help you pass the CompTIA A plus 1001 and the 1002 is that you need to give yourself some sort of a mental break from IT. It is very easy to get into the habit of study, 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 worry, 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 worry. What about this troubleshooting method? What about this troubleshooting method? How do I do this on Android? How do I do this on iPhone? What's the, what's this, uh, Linux command versus what's this Mac OS, uh, command or windows command. Look, relax. You don't need to know everything to pass this test. It's impossible. Trust me. Unless you just have just this amazing photographic memory that allows you to remember everything. Chill out. If I could pass this test and I'm coming from a healthcare medical background, then there's no reason why you can't pass this test. And if you fail, that's fine. The first time I took the CompTIA A plus uh, 1001, I failed. And I, but I only failed by like 20 points. The next time took it passed. The second time I, I took the, well, the first time I took the part two, the 1002, I failed, failed by like 20 points this time. The second time I passed. So give yourself a break. It is okay to fail. We are learning something new. We are learning something different. So just a quick review, just a quick recap, physical reading material, some sort of in lab uh, virtual virtualization study material. Uh, you want to set up study blocks so that you don't overwhelm yourself and give yourself a break. It's OK to fail. It's OK to fail. Nobody wants to fail. But it is okay to fail. Just pick yourself up. Do better the next time. All right. Until next time, it's been your friendly neighborhood brother, J. Dot Butter, and I'm out. I just want to be the one you love. I just want to be the one you love.